MCAT 2017 CRAM, Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Behavior. Passage 1, Activation of T Lymphocytes. As you view the reading of this passage, you may notice some highlighted selections of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these snippets in order to answer the questions that follow. This passage is extremely manageable and so are the questions, so good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. T-cell activation is an antigen-dependent process leading to proliferation and differentiation of naive T-cells into effector cells. The process requires primary and co-activating signals, triggering intracellular signal transduction cascades and new gene expression. Paragraph 2. Signal 1 occurs when the T-cell receptor, that's TCR, finds a foreign antigenic protein on the cell surface of an antigen-presenting cell, APC, or target cell, as shown here. And the T-cell co-receptor binds the major histocompatibility complex, as shown here. MHC, molecule on the APC, or target cell. So this entire um, mention is uh, shown in figure one right here, okay? Paragraph three. Signal two occurs when co-activating molecules on the T cell bind co-stimulatory proteins on the APC or target cell the most important of which is the B7, B7 binding by T-cell costimulary proteins result in T-cell activation, whereas a lack of binding results in apoptosis of the cell. Because most native cells do not possess B7, this system prevents T-cells from reacting to the host's own proteins. Paragraph four. The combination of signals one and two determines the nature of the T cell response to the antigen. Activation of cytotoxic CD8 T cells via MHC type 1 binding results in the direct lysis of target cells, whereas activation of helper CD4 T cells via MCH type 2 binding causes multiple downstream effects including synthesis of important pro-inflammatory molecules, cytokines that is, such as tumor necrosis factor, enhancement of antibody secretion by B cells, and enhanced killing by cytotoxic CD4, I mean CD8 cells, okay? My reading is like really off. Paragraph five. CD4 T cells affect a broad range of immune responses and are therefore critical for normal immune function. As physicians have learned from AIDS patients in whom CD4 cells are diminished or dysfunctional, the affected host is resultantly susceptible to opportunistic infections. In contrast, when CD4 cells are overactive, they may oversecrete inflammatory cytokines resulting in inflammatory diseases such as lupus. Figure one, overview of T cell activation. 
So here goes Sigma 1 after, uh, you know, the binding of um, the antigen and Sigma 2. Which of the following is required for activation of native T cells into effector cells? Is it A, MHC and co-stimulatory co protein binding by T cells? Is it B, MHC type 1 and B7 binding? Is it um, C, binding of co-stimulatory antibody and B7 molecule? Or is it D, MHC type 1? and MHC type 2 binding by T-cells. I'll give you a moment to think. Open up a second window to view the reading of the passage if you need to. All right. Okay, so now for the moment of truth, all right? So, a lot of people were stuck between answer choice C and answer choice A, um, but here's the thing. Antibody binding is not a component of T cell activation. Antibody production results from the activation of CD4 T cells. Okay, pretend this is a 4. And as for answer choice D, this is too specific and not all-inclusive because binding MHC uh, type 1 or 2 is necessary for activation, but is not the only requirement. Remember, MHC is major histocompatibility complex, okay? The most accurate answer here is answer choice A. Um... The T cell binding of both MHC major histocompatibility complexes and co stimulatory proteins. Here goes our co stimulatory proteins. You know, they're required for T cell activation. And the term co stimulatory protein includes the important B7 molecule. Okay? All right. Which of the following best describes the mechanism of T cell tolerance to host proteins? Is it A, the T cell binds antigen and co-stimulatory molecules but fails to bind MHC? Is it B, the T cell binds MHC and antigen but not co-stimulatory molecules? Is it C, the T-cell receptor binds MHC, but the co-receptor fails to bind antigen? Or is it D, the T-cell receptor binds co-stimulatory molecules, but fails to bind MHC? So I give, I'll give you a moment to think and definitely refer back to the passage if you need to. All right. Okay, so um, it's important to remember that signal one provides specificity. So when the T cell receptor binds MCH, the major histocompatibility complex, and the um, co-receptor binds the antigen, the T cell will adequately recognize this antigen, okay? Signal two results from the binding of the T cell to co-stimulatory molecules, but if the antigen comes from a host cell, the T cell will not bind the co-stimulatory molecule and will not be activated. A major clue for this is given in the last sentence of paragraph three. Therefore, the correct answer is that B, the T cell binds MHC and antigen, but not co-stimulatory molecules. All right, okay. 
All of the following are true of CD4 cells except A, they secrete important inflammatory cytokines. B, they are involved in direct killing of target cells. C, they are activated by binding of type 2 MHC. Or D, they enhance antibody production by B cells. I'll give you a moment to think and definitely refer back to the passage if you need to. All right. Okay, so CD4 cells are indeed activated by type 2 MHC. Type 1 MHC binding results in activation of um, CD8 cells, as mentioned by the passage. CD4 cells are involved in multiple critical immune functions, including enhancement of antibody production by B cells and production of important cytokines. However, C CD4 cells, they don't kill um, target cells directly. This is the role of CD8 cells. This is why CD4 cells are called helper T cells, not cytotoxic T cells, okay? So the correct answer is answer trace B. They are involved in um, direct killing of target cells. And this was, well, the major hints for all these is given in the last sentence of paragraph four. So you didn't need outside standalone knowledge in order to answer this question. Everything was contained within the passage. All right, okay. A 25 year old woman with lupus has been taking a medication that inhibits the effect of CD4 secreted cytokines, specifically tumor necrosis factor, TNF, what is the patient at the greatest risk of developing? Is it A, impairment of normal inflammatory response with resultant tuberculosis? Is it B, overcompensation by cytotoxic CD8 cells causing sterile bronchitis? Or is it C, lung cancer due to abnormally high levels of tumor necrosis factor? Definitely press pause if you need to and refer back to the passage. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so overcompensation by CD8 cells would not necessarily result from blocking um, CD4 synthesized cytokines, okay? And levels of TNF, tumor necrosis factor, will be lower, not higher. Also, abnormally high levels of TNF result, would result in a lower likelihood um, of developing cancer, although the patient would develop some other issues. So by blocking CD4 cytokines, you could block some of the immune functions of CD4 cells, causing the patient to be at risk for infection. This is explicitly stated in the passage. I think it's the second to last sentence in paragraph four. And one such infection is tuberculosis. So the correct answer choice is answer choice A. All right, okay. Which of the following would be a potential explanation for T-cell me mediated autoimmune disease? Is it A, excessive apoptosis of self-recognizing T-cells? Is it B, failure of apoptosis of self-recognizing T-cells? Is it C, failure of differentiation of naive T-cells into CD8 cytotoxic cells? Or is it D, underexpression of cytokines by T cells? I'll give you a moment to think. This may require outside knowledge separate from the passage. All right. Okay, so um, 
Overexpression, not underexpression of inflammatory cytokines contributes to autoimmune disease. Okay, this is mentioned in, in the passage. Um, CD8 cytotoxic cells play less of a role in autoimmune disease than CD4 cells do, so this is not correct as well. Um, inappropriate apoptosis, specifically failure of apoptosis of cells that recognize self antigens is most likely an explanation for many autoimmune diseases over excessive apoptosis, okay? So the correct answer is answer choice B.